was at a swap meet once with my dad in Azusa, at the Azusa Drive-In Theater. And uh, here was this surfboard that this guy was selling. And I talked him into let me earn the money for it. And he bought it for me and my brother, Jeff. You know, we were only 16 years old. My brother was like 12. And we would get a couple other guys and go get donuts and go surfing. You got to figure out how to get the wave. Only one guy's going to get it. And there might be 15 guys that are trying to get it. So it was very competitive and it was a sport. I always had a place where I can go throughout my lifetime where if I'm having difficulties or challenges and I just need to get away from it, I go to this one place, just kind of unwind and forget about things for a while. I'll be a kid again, just to be a kid again. So I've always been drawn towards competition. I like it. I like to go head to head and compete. But I knew nothing about dental technology. That came later, 100%, it was because of my dad. Greg was always the aggressive one. He's the one that organizes everything and gets everybody to join, and Greg was always a leader. He, he pushed himself to go to the next step, next step, always the next step. It started off probably because I was surfing too much, and my dad said, hey, I'm gonna see if I can talk him in and go in and looking at this thing. And I think my dad thought I'd be interested because I liked building stuff and doing model work. And He liked to build things. He liked to do uh, the small, intricate things, so I knew that uh, if he ever got involved in a dental lab that he'd do well. I think he put two and two together all on his own and he just thought, man, you know, I think he'd be good at it. One Saturday he said, uh, hey, you know, I got a friend, Ed Shatara was his name. Ed needed some help at the time. He works for this lab in Covina here. You want to go check it out? I knew nothing about it, but I said, sure. So Saturday morning we got up and went over to see Ed. And Ed showed me around and Ed told me, he says, look, he says, if you go to this trade school that he went to, you come back, I'll, I'll give you a job. I walked out of there with my dad and said, hey, I'm gonna open a dental lab. I had a rental house that happened to be empty at the time and we decided that'd be a good place to start. It wasn't very far from where we lived. And we started the, the lab in the garage. A lot of work started coming in. The dentist saw the value in what we were doing and so we just exploded. They worked there for a year, year and a half before they went and rented their own shop and set their dental lab up in, a, in another building. You know, we felt like we really were a business then, and it was legit. Eventually, I uh, moved down to Murrieta to be closer to home. We bought the building we're in presently, state of the art, and we moved into it, modified it, and, uh, and so we've been here since 2005. <laughs> son started working for us. I started working here at 14 years old with an opportunity for my dad to buy my first car and work here to pay off that first car. He'd come to work at the lab and wouldn't take a single dime home. <laughs> Every single penny had to go to pay that car off. I think he paid about 25000 for that car, which for a 15-year-old kid is like a like million dollars, right? Now he's here today and he's, he's uh, helping me in a big way. It's been great to work with him in a professional aspect, to learn from him, but then also to be able to spend time with him as a father and be able to have father-son experiences here is a really great thing and something that I will appreciate for probably the remainder of my life. We once did uh, the lab work for uh, Dennis Rodman. He came to the dental office uh, to get his veneers, but he was in a wedding gown. special techniques that we use on the posterior crowns that is different than anywhere else. And it really makes our crowns stand out and makes them look very special. On our anterior work, most labs do some type of porcelain layering, but we do a special technique that was developed here, micro layering, and it really gives our cases a very unique look. Teeth have layers and we put all these different colors inside there that makes teeth look natural and I simulate that with porcelain and stain. The thing that I hear back from our customers all the time is that our crowns actually look like a natural tooth. Our goal has never been to make crowns. We don't want to make crowns, we make teeth. Most people just paint the glaze on, give it to you and it's done. It doesn't look like a natural surface. When you mechanically polish and go in there and do those things, it looks like a tooth and that's what we're doing. Our work stands out above other work. When you put Procraft's work on the table, when you put other people's work on there, you can tell. I can as a technician. I can just see and look and be like, yeah, that's, that's our stuff right there. Each individual crown is different. Each smile that we create is particularly designed for that specific patient, and there's not another one like it.
I really love that the restorations that we create are going into somebody's mouth and making their lives better overall. Behind every case that we do, there's a person. When somebody has full mouth reconstruction or all of their aesthetic zone done, you know, all the stuff that matters the most, and you can go in there and you can change all that, and you can give them the smile that they want or that they need, they walk away a different person. From restoring self-confidence through a beautiful smile, to enjoying Thanksgiving dinner without a painful bite, to protecting your teeth, during a very important football game. These are all things that improve customers' lives. I'm very fortunate to be able to come every single day and work with this dedicated group of the team leaders, the main guys. It's hard to find that kind of a crew. After 40-something years, I can only think of maybe a handful of guys that would have fit the bill for this kind of a position, and most of them are still here now. I've watched him get married, and I've watched the kids all being born. And now I'm watching grandkids being born. When my kids are older and they come in, I hope that they feel the magic that I would feel when I'd come into the lab. I think Greg, he's probably one of the hardest working people I've ever met. He's very passionate about what he does. He's been a mentor. He's taught me how to build porcelain. My work ethic, I've learned from him. Anything I've ever needed, any problems I've ever had, he's been there. I've worked in a lot of places, and this is the first place that I felt as comfortable, that I belonged. You don't get to a position of success without great people behind you. Each of them has their own particular skill and artistry about them. The work that's done is so highly specialized. Machines will never, in the rest of my lifetime for sure, be able to duplicate what a talented individual can do to create an anterior tooth. We work with the best technology we could possibly get our hands on, from the mills to our ovens, our centering furnaces, the tools, the materials that we use, and even the people that we work with. We're always looking for the best. We're always tinkering with it and improving it and modifying the way we do something to make it more efficient. Procraft has always prided itself on being cutting edge and always ahead of the pack and focusing on the next big thing and our customers can expect that going forward and for the duration of the existence of ProGraph.